worship services. We meet back at night at our 9 location at 10.30 p.m. on New Year's Eve service to lead us into 2024. Glory to God. I believe we will be having communion too that night as well. If you are interested in traveling to Africa with TBNT, with True Bethel, 2024, please stop by again. Please stop and ask at our front desk for an information packet. Anybody want to go to Africa? Amen. I know I'm, I'm going. I, I'm, I'm already giving that to the Lord. I am going. <laughs> our virtual prayer line is open for anyone who would like someone to pray with them. And the number is 716 of her husband, Ronnie Woodward. Services will be held at our East Erie campus on Thursday, September 21st, 10 a.m. to 11. Are there any first-time guests? Any first-time guests? No, everybody's still here. Oh, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Let us thank. We have a gift for you. You'll be coming around soon to you. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Is anybody here that wants to light my candle? Joy pink representing, representing joy. On this day, we light the pink or rose-colored candle called the shepherd's candle. This candle represents joy because the shepherds receive a message of joy that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, has been born. The change from purple to pink signifies the transition and season from repentance to celebration. We move from obligation to joy. We move from pain to praise. As we transition from purple to pink, we move Repentance to celebration because Jesus is coming back. Jesus. our hearts and minds towards heaven. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come so humbly to you today. First of all, Lord, we want to thank you for your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, being born this time of year to give us glory, to give us honor, to give us some praise. We worship you this morning because we love you so much and magnify and glorify your name. Father, we go into this service to give you the love that you deserve. We just want to say thank you one more time for waking us up to see another day. And we ask all this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, as we always pray in Jesus' name.
Thank you. 
about the song that we sing in harmony. It's not about Santa Claus or dashing through the snow. By the born in a manger at the whole.
as it was the night before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was staring, not even a mouse. In my mind, I want you to be free. All of my friends Listen to me Now hear what I say We wish you a Merry Christmas
to sleep and relax your mind. To all our family and friends, I want you to remember this time. You just give God praise for our men. Amen. Amen. And amen. Will you go with me to Luke chapter number one? Job well done. Luke chapter number one. And I'm going to take you to the 35th verse. Verse 35, the angel replied, the Holy Ghost will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. This is the angel talking to Mary when the angel tells her, you will have a baby. He says, so the baby will be born, will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. Listen to this line. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived this evil. I want to talk from the subject people used to say. Will you, will you help your friend and tell them people used to say some things about you? You may be seated. <laughs> it took about three of y'all a minute to get it. Yeah. Even <laughs> in the day. Somebody got their deliverance already. Even in the days of the Bible, people had something to say about things that were not their business. I know I'm in the right church right now. What was interesting to me in the text, and obviously I've preached from this text many a times, is I missed this whole thing of the angel telling Mary about what people used to say about Elizabeth. Now, 
I need y'all don't, don't miss that. She wasn't telling Mary people used to talk about you. She said people used to talk about your cousin. And the fact that she didn't have any children. This morning, for a few minutes, I want to talk about what people used to say. Because almost everybody in here, everybody alive, has had something that people used to say. They had a lot to say about what you don't have, what you do have, who you have, who you don't have, what you have, what you don't have, where you been, where you have not been. Can I preach in here for a minute? Where you are in your life now and where you haven't been in your life ever. For the rest of your life, in case you don't know this, let me tell you what my grandmama taught me. For the rest of your life, people gonna talk about you. As long as you're doing something, expect somebody to say something about what you used to do. And the bad thing about it, the bad thing about it is some of it's true, but it don't define who you are right now. I feel like preaching for somebody because one of the greatest miracles that God did was turn around your life. Yeah, you... It ain't about no car, it ain't about no house, it ain't about no money. At the end of the day, what they used to say about you, there's some witnesses in here, they can say it, but it don't mean that it's true. Am I preaching for Swan Street? We, we enter the text this morning after several very important events have occurred. You remember the mother of, of, of Jesus is told as a virgin that she's going to have this baby. He would be the savior of the world. But before that, and the last time uh, that I preached, I talk, told you about another miracle. And it was with an old woman, an old man, who God shows up to the priest as he's in the sanctuary. And he says that the, the, the Lord has heard your prayer and you're going to have a child. He doubted, he doubted the angel and the word of the Lord. And the Lord shut his mouth. Said, I ain't going to let you talk about it then. Since you don't believe me, you ain't going to be able to testify about it. Well, keep you shut up until this baby comes to fruition. And so now you have uh, these two women and Mary, according to the Bible, after she hears uh, what the angel has to say to her, uh, that she would become pregnant, uh, after she hears it, she runs to go and see her cousin Elizabeth because the angel told her, you're not the only one that's about to receive a miracle. Your cousin Elizabeth, your relative Elizabeth, is about to have a baby in her old age. Remember this, in the Bible days, there was no plan B. They wanted to have babies. They wanted to be married. They wanted that because it was honorable in the Bible days for a woman to marry and have a baby. And so now you have a, 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 a young person who runs to the house of an older person who is her relative and there's about to be an interaction. Now, I want to deal with this just for 20 seconds because I, I have sensed and I've heard young people who are disrespectful to older people because they forget that older people have made a way for them to be here. Let me help. Let me help somebody. Y'all might not want to say it, but I'm going to say it and I'm going to say it till I die. That, that we got to understand I can't st I can't stand to see young people being disrespectful in the presence of elderly people acting like you ain't got no home training I came up in a time when you talked to somebody who was older you had to put a handle on when you said then you ain't call nobody Mabel you better call them Miss Mabel ma'am can I preach
preacher in here. I don't know. Y'all, y'all, there's some of y'all ain't got too, got, got too lazy in parenting because at the end of the day, no child of mine is going to cuss me. I don't care how old you are. You're going to leave me with a tooth missing. Am I talking in here? You ain't going to cuss me no matter what your age is, no matter what your stage is. End of the day, there must be respect for those who have gone before you. Mary, although she is going to carry the Savior of the world, goes to Elizabeth. Let, 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 let me give you one more thing there. I got tied up in this in the earlier service. But, 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 but look, 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 look what Mary does. Mary doesn't wait, although she's about to birth the Savior of the world. Mary does not wait for Elizabeth to show up to her, her child. She ain't wait for the baby shower. She decided, I'm going to her. If I can teach you young people anything, and I know you might say, this old bald head man, he just, he getting on my nerves. I came to tell you, you better pray that you live as long as this old bald. Am I talking in here? Because one of the things that I learned how to do was respect those who came before me, and you're not going to be in my presence even when I was younger, and disrespect somebody older than us. Somebody got to be able to say, grandmama in the next room. Y'all ain't talking to me. You you got your, your, your grandmama in the next room, but if grandmama doing the same thing that the kids are doing, come on, come on, let me let me preach, let me. We got to get back to the point of respect in our community and in our home. You, I need somebody who don't play that to just look over at your neighbor and tell them I don't play that. See, I, I don't play that. I don't play that stuff. I don't play that. I don't play that. You ain't going to school. If you ain't going to school, you talking about you sick. You also ain't playing the game. And if you're going to lay your head here, you're going to work or you're going to go to school, you're going to do something because ain't no grown people laying in my house. I am I preaching y'all sermon? And let them get mad if they want to. You better go live with somebody else because it ain't going down like this. I want you to go to school and I want you to go to school and get an education because I don't want to feed you the rest of your life. I want to get to the point where you can take me on vacation. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. I done told all your business. Mary goes to Elizabeth. Now you got to understand that miracles are when God intervenes and changes the very course of nature. What should have naturally happened did not occur or did occur because God stepped in. Now people see you now but they don't know what you've been through to get to the point of where you're at right now. They see, they see you now, they see you now, but they, they, they really don't know your whole struggle and your whole story. Let, 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 let me tell you, let, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone, because I came in late, I'm gone. Elizabeth, Mary are together, because Mary went to her. It's not uncommon in the Bible for God to step in and perform a miracle. Whether you know it or not, Elizabeth and the first one who was barren and God stepped in and made a way. When you go home, read your Bible. Sarah, Abraham's wife. Can I preach for some church people? She's barren and she's old when she gave birth to Isaac. Rebecca, Isaac's wife, was barren until she prayed for, 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 for and God granted, until he prayed for his wife and God granted his prayer. Rachel, Jacob's wife second wife was barren while her sister Leah had many children until she fell before God in desperation and later gave birth to Joseph. Uh, can I preach for just a minute? Hannah, Elkanah's second wife was barren until she prayed with such fervor at the tabernacle that the priest Eli thought she was drunk. And, 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 and realizing he made a mistake, Eli asked that God would grant her petition and she became a mother. Come here, Shunammite woman, a wealthy woman living in Shunam who provided food and a place to stay for the prophet Elisha. He, he, he was a holy man, asked and received a child when offered as a gift by the prophet. Come here, come here, come here, Zachariah. Zachariah, you can't talk, but God has already ble is blessing your wife and going to give your 
your wife something that the nature said she could not get. Let me preach for somebody on your row because what you need to know is that God is still a miracle worker and there are some things that the world does not believe that you are capable of achieving and doing or that you should ever have in your life. But I come to show you off because you don't tell it a lot. But I come to tell somebody you are a living miracle. You ain't got to say it. I already told your business. If they only knew that nature said you should have failed. If they only knew that nature says that you should be in jail. If they only knew that nature says...